angle bisector theorem and its converse. We're at 5.1b. We have one previous video for this chapter 5 that you can go to the geometry playlist in the description and see it if you missed it. And the distance between a point, like this pink P here, and a line, this blue line, is the length of the perpendicular segment from the point to the line. Here's our angle bisector theorem. It says if a point is on the bisector of an angle, like this C, then it is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So C is equidistant from this ray and from this ray. So AC is equal to BC. And angle APC is congruent to angle BPC. These two angles are congruent. Here's applying the angle bisector theorem to find each measure. So we're going to find LM which is this blue one right here. Well, M is a point on the bisector, and LM is going to be equal to JM. So that means LM is equal to 12.8. Here's the converse of the angle bisector theorem. It says, if a point in the interior of an angle is equidistant from the sides of the angle, then it is on the bisector of the angle. So AC is equal to BC, and angle APC is congruent to angle BPC. So remember, the converse of a theorem swaps the hypothesis and conclusion. So see how the conclusion here was AC equals BC, and now the hypothesis is AC equals BC? Okay? And be careful. An angle bisector must be in the interior of the angle it bisects, so a point equidistant from the sides must also be in the angle's interior for it to be on the bisector. Applying the converse of the angle bisector theorem, we can find each measure. So we have, we're looking for the measure of angle ABD. ABD is this right here. And it's given that the measure of angle ABC is 112 degrees. So this big black angle is 112 degrees. Well, since AD, the 74, is equal to DC, that's 74. AD is perpendicular to BA. DC is perpendicular to BC, BD bisects ABC by the converse of angle bisector theorem. And the measure of angle ABD, the one we're looking for, is equal to half the measure of this big black angle ABC. That's the definition of an angle bisector. If this is bisecting this big black angle, then this is half of the whole thing, isn't it? So the measure of angle ABD is equal to half 112 which is equal to 56. And to find the measure of angle TSU, TSU, so that's the 5Z plus 23 degrees. Since RU, this one here, is equal to UT, this one here, RU is perpendicular to segment SR, and U, segment UT is perpendicular to segment ST, SU Ray SU bisects angle RST by the converse of the angle bisector theorem. And if this is equal to this, then we can set our equation. This is equal to this. We have 6Z plus 14 equals 5Z plus 23. And we can remove 5Z from each side to solve for Z. We get 1Z plus 14 is equal to 23. We get rid of the 14 by subtracting 14 from each side, and we get z equals 9. And now that we know that z equals 9, we can substitute it in to this expression and have 5 times 9 plus 23, which is 45 plus 23, which tells us that this is 68 degrees. And you know what? Because they're equal, if this is 68 degrees, then that's also 68 degrees, isn't it? Each pair of suspension lines on a parachute are the same length and are equally spaced from the center of the chute. Now, how do these lines keep the skydiver centered under the parachute? So, we've got this SQ as our angle bisector. Q is going to be his head because that's where all the angles meet. Here's P, here's R, and point S is on PR, right? So, it's given that Segment PQ is congruent to RQ. This one is congruent to this one. So Q, his head, is on the perpendicular bisector of segment PR, the pink one, by the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. And since S is the midpoint of the pink segment PR, the green segment 
QS is the perpendicular bisector of the pink segment PR. Therefore, the skydiver remains centered under the chute. Now, I want to remind you of this because we're going to be using this right now. So remember the slope formula? We find M by using two ordered pairs as X sub 1, Y sub 1, and X sub 2, Y sub 2 to find the rise over the run. And point slope form, right here, we use the ordered pair X sub 1, Y sub 1, and the slope M, whatever it is, to write it in point slope form equation. And the midpoint formula, we use two ordered pairs as x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2 to locate a midpoint. And that is the midpoint formula down there, okay? So we're going to be using those right now. We can write an equation in point-slope form for the perpendicular bisector of the segment with endpoints. A is at negative 1, 6, and B is at 3, 4. And we graph segment AB. And the perpendicular bisector of AB is perpendicular to segment AB at its midpoint. And we find the midpoint of segment AB. We've got these two ordered pairs, and we substitute them into the midpoint formula. So we get negative 1 plus 3 divided by 2, which is a 2 over 2, and 6 plus 4 over 2, which is a 10 over a 2. We simplify them to a 1 and a 5. So we know the midpoint is 1 for x, 5 for y. That's right here, okay? That's the midpoint. It's at 1 for x and 5 for y. The third thing we do is find the slope of the perpendicular bisector. So we have our two ordered pairs here, and we put them into the slope formula. So the slope of segment AB would be a 4 minus 6 over a 3 minus a negative 1. Well, 4 minus 6 is a negative 2, and 3 minus a negative 1, when we subtract a negative, we add the opposite, so we have 3 plus 1, that's a 4. That's going to give us a negative half, and you know what? It's falling to the right, so the slope is negative. See that? And since the slopes of perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocals, the slope of the perpendicular bisector is a positive 2 over a 1. We had a negative 1 over a 2, the opposite reciprocal would be a positive 2 over a 1 or a 2, so the slope is a 2. So remember, opposite reciprocals, they, it flips and changes its sign. So a negative half becomes a positive 2 over a 1. If we had a positive 3, we could write that as 3 over 1, couldn't we? That would become a negative 1 third. See, it flipped and changed signs. And we use point slope form to write an equation. So we know that the midpoint is at 1 for x and 5 for y. We know the slope is a 2. The perpendicular bisector of segment AB has slope of 2, so here's the point slope form. We put a 2 for M, that's the slope, and we have a Y minus Y sub 1, so that's a 5, Y minus 5, and then we have in the parentheses X minus X sub 1, so we have X minus 1, and we wrote it in point slope form. So remember the converse of a statement has the hypothesis and conclusion swap places, all right? Our next lesson is circumcenter of a triangle and circumcenter theorem, 5.2a. I hope you were able to write down these theorems and the theorem in the converse, and I hope you now understand about angle bisectors, and I hope you have a great day. I hope you're doing well. Keep trying. I'm proud of you. Hit that like button for me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.